I just want to say thank you to uh, the Dwyers for having me out here. It really means a lot to get invited to events like this, and I thank you guys for taking the time out to be here. Because for us as presenters, it's all about that reciprocation and the energy. And I, like I said, it's, it's moments like these that can define you, can define your career. You can see people pop and change. And if you're at the event, energy is contagious. If you're not, you miss it. So take this weekend in, breathe it in, because a lot of people won't come back to some, or they'll come back to more, but you gotta live in the present. That's the only thing you can count on. You can't take the past with you, and you can't count on the future. What you can count on is what you're doing right now. So I'm gonna talk about uh, building a brand. I've, I've been in the fitness industry for almost 20 years, but I've been an entrepreneur just as long. Um, a lot of people have been asking me about these different programs I'm doing, and I'll just clear that up. The 20-Minute Body is a new workout program that I'm going to launch uh, online in the new year, and it'll be a hardcover book in 2015. But I get asked a lot by fitness professionals about uh, business advice. So this is, right now, the website for you guys for business advice. When the program comes out, it will be 20-Minute Body, 20MinuteBody.com. Um, but I'm going to talk a little bit personally. When it comes to branding, I'm constantly switching my brand a little bit. Not the core values, right? So it's like you're wearing your suit, but the accessories change. But the outfit really doesn't. But my brand is probably what most of you guys know me for. It's like a, a fitness expert. My goal in the next three years is to be the Tony Robbins of fitness. A lot of the life experiences that I went through as an adopted kid, as an overweight kid, someone that didn't look like their family and a lot of stuff, and being good at sports, and then being too heavy to do sports, and then using sports to get out of it, has led me into this career. I went from pre-med into finance into fitness. And I can tell you for a fact, this was definitely the, you know, a destiny for me. And the, I do not just want to be fitness. I, I look at fitness as like the shell of the egg. It's tangible, it's accessible, it's understandable. I know everybody wants to get in their skinny jeans. I'm down with that. But underneath of that, why people want to do that, what drives them, the emotional things, that is really like the golden yolk of the egg. And you guys know that as coaches, that you can get somebody into a group, but when they pop and they change and you see them or they sign up because they're so motivated to do it, that's really what I'm about, seeing that change. I saw it on contestants in The Biggest Loser. I've seen it in my test groups and Rev Abs, and, and I see it all the time. But that sort of inspirational side of fitness is a direction I'm going in, and that's where my brand is moving. So just to give you, an, I'm, a lot of what I'm gonna talk about today are personal things for me and my company, the consultants that I work with, and I'm gonna try to give you guys some real uh, tangible advice. There will be homework, so I hope you brought your number two pencils. But this is an interactive thing. It's not me up here just being, you know, lecturing. So one of the main things, I'm, I, it wasn't a mistake, but I struggled with in the beginning, I had a brand called Urban Motion. I created a class, boxing, kickboxing, capoeira, and a little bit of freestyle dance with house music. And, I create, and it, the first thing, I called it Urban Motion. But I was thinking in my head, you know, I want to create a program. I want it to be about the program, the program, the program. You know, people are like, oh, don't you want to get paid? You, you want to get paid in your sleep, so you don't, have, you don't have to show up all the time. And if it's only about you, then you've got to show up all the time. And I didn't really think it through. And I made it all about the program. And the reality is, people were coming to my programs and my classes, not because of the punch, not because of the kick or the choreography. They were coming because they wanted to work out with me, my personality. That was really it. And I didn't realize that until I got some really solid advice from people. And... I was actually writing, hired a guy to write a business plan, and he was like, people come to work out with you, not your program. And so he went through, look at Billy Blanks, look at this person, look at that. And I, I realized, and I put a lot of effort into branding this program, and he said, my advice to you is, you should brand you, not the program. Now you can, like if I had come up with Rev, Rev Abs first, I'm not saying you can't brand a program first. But eventually, all roads lead back to you, generally. If you create a corporation, fine. But my advice is, you better figure out what brand you are actually promoting. 
And nine times out of 10 with fitness professionals, I found it's you. So you can launch a product, you can launch a program, but you should be very clear about what is at the top of that food chain. And I, I, at this point for me, it's I am at the top of the food chain. I am branding me. The core values are from me. And every program that launched has similar core values. And we can brand that sub-program, but all roads lead back to this guy, just as an example. So I, I encourage you guys to think about that because I, when I'm on Fit or Flop as a judge, a lot of people come up and they're trying to promote something and ultimately it's really about them. And they can describe it, but they, they, there's a disconnect. So whether you're promoting yourself as a coach or your challenges, they are coming generally for you. And you need to figure out how to brand you. It's very important. So decide what is at the top of the food chain. The next thing is core values that I talk about. Core values make up a lot of what they call your unique value proposition, which is what distinguishes what you're offering from the rest of the competition. And to me, that is what is at the core of it. And hopefully there are some things that are different. You can have a lot of similar things, but you've got to put a little bit of a spin on it. So this is what I want you guys to think about. I want you to think of three to four things about whatever brand you're trying to promote that makes it different. I want you to write it down. Think for a minute. I'm going to tell you what, what um, for me, I have more of a global ethnicity. I got made so, uh, so much fun of for having dark skin, closed eyes, and big lips as a kid. And now, luckily, in this day and age, being sort of a mixed ethnicity is able to go for Asian American and... Uh, you know, Latin American, and all, you know, it, it, it actually helped me relate to a lot of people. So global ethnicity is something that distinguishes me different than a lot of other people. My pre-med background, you know, once we get into the discussion of science, that's something that helps distinguish me. My capoeira, martial arts, a lot of people do it, but capoeira is something that not that many people here in the States do. And I think more of moving from fitness into a real inspirational, genuine message. I try to really speak from the heart and I'm not trying to be a cheerleader. I'm gonna give it to you straight. So take a minute, and I want you to write down three or four bullet points that distinguishes you or your brand from the rest. You have to create a brand promise, and you gotta stick with it. The name of the game is consistency. Whether you are the nice person, the really not nice person, it doesn't matter. You know everybody loves to hate certain people on TV because they consistently deliver the message. So you have to create a brand promise and you've got to deliver on it. And that brand promise should be recognizable immediately when people connect with you. Like they should basically know what to expect. They shouldn't have to figure it out. I'm not saying you have to be over the top in their face but you're going to, you should be able to figure out something about that brand as soon as you meet them. Try to do it as much as possible. If you're going to create a brand promise, think about it first. Think about what you want the experience to be for the other person, the end user. Think it out first before you deliver it. And a lot of people do not do that. They really don't. If your goal for the challenge group is to get more people to sign up, or if it's to enroll them as coaches, you have to really figure out what is the goal first, and then deliver on that. Maybe if it's to get more people in, your focus is going to be, I am going to kick ass in these workouts in the beginning and put all else aside. I'm not even going to talk about coaching because I want them to become raving fans just about the training. That's it, nothing else. Maybe not even the food, not the Shakeology. I just want them to be like, this coach is kicking my ass and I love it. You know, you sort of pick something, you reverse engineer it, and you stick to the plan. But you have to be very specific. A roadmap is only as good as how specific it is. If it's vague, you're gonna get lost. If it's specific, you will get from point A to point B very efficiently. I sound so serious, don't I? God, it's like, who is he? 
Every brand has got a great story. What's your story? I can tell you what mine were in those bullet points. I was an adopted kid, an ex-fat kid that used fitness as my freedom to lose the weight and develop my ideology of walk your talk and it changed my career three times and I ended up in something that I love and I'm very, very lucky to be in. So what is your story? Because I know you got one. Here's what I want you to do because you have to tell your story. People are going to ask and they don't want to sit through a lecture. You got their attention for about two sentences. You have to figure out how to tell your story literally in two sentences. The longer it takes you to explain your value proposition or your story, the less people are going to remember it. In this day and age, you've got 140 characters to tell your story. That's about how short it gets. So you got to be succinct. Less is more if you can tell it the right way. So if you were going to write a speech about your story, pick three bullet points that you would use. Fat kid that didn't know he was fat, fitness from within, and passion is priceless. I'd pick those three. I want you to take a minute and write down three bullet points about your story. So when you're giving a speech, you can write bullet points and you get to expound on them. You should know them by heart. So think for a second. What is your story? How far does it go back? Just write a couple bullet points down on it. You surprise yourself sometimes what comes up. Sometimes it just comes up. Sometimes you got to think a little bit. But usually the emotional ones that connect to you, they just hit the paper right away. And if you haven't been thinking about this, it's really important. Because when you have to just tell what you do to other people, that is the number one way. You can put stuff up on Facebook. You can tweet it. You can gram it. You can do whatever you want. They are going to meet the real deal at some point. And you're either going to live up to it or you're not. So take a minute. Write down those bullet points. Your homework is to take those bullet points and write a few sentences so that you have now a speech that you can talk about your story. If you heard of an elevator pitch, you get in the elevator, you have to walk up an elevator or ride up, and you have about, I don't know, 15 seconds. Any guys here? Guys, raise your hand. Single guys? Keep them up. No, I'm kidding. Anyway. You got, if the girl gets on the elevator, you're thinking, oh my God, how many time? I got 15 seconds. It's like that. You got 15 seconds to introduce yourself, <laughs> say hello, and pray to God you can get her number. So write me an elevator pitch right now. Write a sentence. I don't care if you use those bullet points. I don't care if you use hashtags. Write something down. If you were to ride up in the elevator with me in 20 seconds, tell me something interesting so when I walk out of there, I remember you. It stays with me. It's like your perfume or your cologne. It's hanging around. When I'm on fit or flop, half the time, the people that I remember, it's from the most random stuff. Random. But write down one sentence right now, an elevator pitch. I can give you mine. I believe fitness is the shell of an egg and the golden yolk is how fitness from within can change your life. Because as a teenager that struggled with my weight, fitness became my freedom and I turned my pain into passion. And that's the truth. And for you guys that realize I'm try I am really on the mission of being like the Tony Robbins of fitness, that's what I'm trying to say. Not, oh, I got this program and I train these people. It's moving beyond that. So think about what you want. Take a sentence. Even if it becomes, like, the reason I'm having you do this, these things become your slogans. They become your taglines. They become your hashtags. Fitness from within. Passion is priceless. These are hashtags that I use that started as bullet points for speeches. 
you'll start to see when you start to do all this, all of a sudden you're going to connect multiple things. You're going to be killing multiple birds of stone. Bullet points become hashtags. Then there are, you can write speeches. You can do this. You can do that. It all comes together, but you've got to practice. One that I say that is more of my, I guess, my fitness philosophy, but it's not fitness, is the dumbbell and the... Du this is what I get asked in a lot of interviews. Brett, give us your number one fitness tip. What's your number one nutrition tip or exercise? I'm like, okay, you want to know what it is? The dumbbell and the diet don't get you in shape. Your accountability to your word and your belief in yourself do. End of story. But you see, that's the truth. It's still pointing me in this direction of not just fitness. So take the time. Think about these things. Write them down. Take your phone out. If you have a, whatever, PDA, iPhone, that notepad, you should have different notes in my opinion. One on hashtags, one on URLs, one on slogans. It, it will make you think a different way. It will make you communicate a different way. When you get interviewed, you will talk in sound bites, not in sentences. You will be asked to go back to that TV show instead of they, were, they, they talked way too much. You will give editors perfect bits of information so they ask you to write for them again instead of this was just too wordy. Now I want you to give me just instead of three sentences or I want three words that describe who you are. If you, we were going to talk about, for me right now in my life, I would say movement, music, and my mantra, my message. If any of you took my class today, you would have felt that. I put time into that playlist, I put time into that workout, and I absolutely put time into my message. So mine is movement, music, and mantra, those three. Think and write down three for yourself. Stop looking at the person next to you. I saw that. How do you want to be remembered? What do you want as your legacy? I mean, I can already see for people like Christine and Janelle, she, their legacies are these amazing coaches that they have. I mean, obviously, they're the big diamonds, but that's not, it's not just about them. It's about all you guys that aren't. But in a, as a business, you're the legacy. It's amazing. So think about how do you want to be remembered at the end of the day? I want you to describe that and describe your brand sh something short. Right for right now, in one year, and in three years. What is your legacy? For me right now, celebrity trainer launching a new program. Three years, Tony Robbins of fitness. Five years, international ambassador for inspiration. What do you want? And write it down. Right now, three years, and five. Because you are going to be surprised. I used to do this and write it on my wall. And I swear to God, I came back one day, it was like this piece of paper, and it had fallen back, and I swear I lifted it up. I had searched my birth parents. I had done an infomercial. I had done TV, and like two other things. I was shocked. I mean, it took me five years longer than I wanted, but I was like, you get a little fist pound for that one. <laughs> you write it down. You speak about it, the, the, the words, the thoughts, they become actions. So take your time and think about what do you want right now, three years, and five. And don't be afraid to dream big. There is no difference between, like, I, I still am humbled by the fact that I'm this you know, supposedly celebrity fitness person. There's no difference between me and you. I work my ass off. I'm an entrepreneur. I, I am very serious about my education. I'm passionate about what I do. You know, I take the time to talk to people because I like people. I learn. I spend time at events like this and listen to speakers too because I want to learn. My business is moving more or less from offline to online, internet marketing, a whole other thing, and affiliate marketing. I spend a lot of time and money and resources going to hear people of that speak. But there is no difference, really, between you and I. You know? The only difference may be some of the things we studied in our life experiences. 
but there is no reason you can't do what I did. Absolutely none. It's not a question of can you do it, it's a question of will you do it. Will you basically pay the price, make the sacrifice, and work hard enough to get there? So core demographics, once you have a brand, who are you going to give it to? Very important. Now some businesses like to find the demographic first, and then they build a product around that demographic. And the other way is, you have a product, and then you try to find who it's best for. I'm not here to tell you which way to do it. But I am here to tell you, you need to figure out exactly who you are going to pitch this to, period. So I'm talking about getting so specific, you know their shoe size. So for me, the 20 minute body. It is 20 minute workouts and 20 minute meals. It's body weight. It does incorporate HIIT training, high intensity interval training, but it also incorporates other forms of training that are not so intense. Do you want to know who my main demographic was? Is it going to be the CrossFit girl? No. What, is it going to be the Self Magazine girl? No. Those are two, but they're not the main ones. It's going to be, it's like the Zumba mom, the Turbo mom, the soccer mom. That's who I want. I have two. Yeah. <laughs> my sisters are constantly like, hey, mister, what about us? I have two older sisters, they're like, what about us? I don't have time for this. What is the number one reason people don't cook for themselves or work out? Absolutely. Someone tell me how much, I'm, before I go, expound too much, I go, okay, 10 minutes, 15? Five, okay. <laughs> Dang it. So, um, their, their whole thing is, I don't have time. So. Some of them had gotten injured from other programs. Some of them had tried uh, and didn't get results. My sister's like, I'm not sweating with the oldies, sorry. I mean, just, where, I'm not going to curves. Like, what is there? So that's a void that I wanted to fill. And I, I run into these moms all the time. I worked with them in many areas. And I do feel like that's a whole spot that has gotten left out. And I'm not talking about the super in shape mom. Like, they've got a lot of choices. I'm talking about moms that are probably 30, 40 pounds overweight because they've been putting everybody else in front of themselves instead of themselves. Everybody, everything. A lot of them are not happy with their marriage. They're not happy with their career. Just this is something I wanted to provide. So this core demographic, she's 45 years old. Her name is Pamela. She has two kids. Middle school. One about to go into high school. She makes $60,000. She's a single mom. She lives in the Midwest. Like, I'm, I'm talking about getting that specific. You have to think about it. Because once you get that specific, you know how to speak to them. You know exactly what to do. So I completely flipped the script on the book and my videos. I'm like, I don't want the high intensity stuff. They can't do that. They got injured doing that. I revamped everything to make that person, that, that woman, feel completely comfortable coming into the program, where she can be like, I can do this. I revamped a lot. So think about who that person is. What is their name? Everything about them. Very important. Okay. I am going to leave with um, a poem. So I, I am going to offer this, which is not that. <laughs> you can go to, basically, I have a much more, there are different topics that I'm going to cover. One is social media. I get asked this all the time. Social media, PR versus a social media manager, your agent. These are all videos that we're shooting or have shot some. You will get them for free. Just go to the site and I will send them to you. Very informative. Okay, so here's to all you guys that are coaches. And I think that you guys are a special breed because you walk your talk and you are inspiring other people. You are role models. You are leaders. It's that simple. 
And there are not a lot of people that take that and do that. So this goes out to you guys. And it also has to do with what we're talking about. You possess something inside of you that not many have. It's a code of ethic, a way of being. You wear it like a badge. It doesn't have a color, an odor, or a shape. It's called integrity, loyalty. That's the shit you can't fake. Trust me when I say the money comes and goes, and so does the fame. But what's left behind when the spotlight fades is hopefully the same. It's your values, your ethics, your motherfucking soul. Not the money, not the fame. These things do not make you whole. The secret sauce you have is worth money than what you cash in. It's the fire in your belly. It's called real passion. Not doing what you love, not following your dreams, that would be a crisis. Because passion, my friend, well, passion is priceless. What people remember is your look in the eye. It's the shake of your hand. That's the real shit that makes up your brand. <laughs>